in the heart of the um, the whole education in this area, children are being taught about the intimacy of sexuality in such a way that it can actually freeze some children. It can do them great damage. Louise Kirk, it, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. And I'll tell you why it's a pleasure. Not just because you're an uh, Oxford-educated historian, we could talk about history, I'd love to do that, um, or because you work for the House of Lords or, or the British Academy or lots of other interesting things you do, but because, or have done, but because um, at the moment you're the UK coordinator for something called Alive to the World. Now, before we proceed any further, just say hi to our listeners and our viewers so they can hear your voice. Well, it's a huge pleasure to talk to you, Tony. I've listened to you so often. I know you personally. I'll give that little bit away. Um, I admire what you do hugely. And I also think that your um, project, helping people to appreciate what many people take for granted, and that is that thing called marriage, is just so important for families and for society. So it's a huge pleasure to be here. The reason uh, I'm so keen to talk to you is because we we spent a lot of time wringing our hands about the state of education and the state of education materials and all sorts of things um, that are out there which are just unhealthy. Um, and there are you know there are there are many good organizations so for example there's there's lovewise who produce wonderful educational resources but a lot of te teachers say to me well because our school isn't religious and, and lovewise is biblically based we've, we've got trouble using it in our school you know difficulty or whatever the case may be but they do produce wonderful educational resources but you work for an organization uh, alive to the world and um, while you haven't really got much presence yet in the UK you're, you're very active worldwide and what you do is produce um, values-based RSE material and what I really love about the material, I've had a good look at it, and I, I will we'll put the, the website address up on the screen so other people can go and have a look at it as well. Um, you, you, it, it's almost like the, there isn't a, an overt uh, identified faith base to the material. I know you're a Catholic yourself. I'm a Christian myself, but the material doesn't have an overt faith base. It's just based in good common sense, reasonable values basis. And it's material that, that helps children grow and learn how to be good friends, good family members, good members of society, how to respect everybody in their culture and their society without identifying or majoring on one particular group or identity set or anything else like that. And it, it just strikes me as wonderful stuff that people could use in any school and I'd like people to, to look at it, to consider it, to consider promoting it, to consider sending it to their schools, all sorts of things like that. That's why I wanted to talk to you today. So I wonder if you could start off Louise just, just telling us about what is Alive to the World. You described so much so already. First of all I'll pick up on the title. It is Alive to the World. That is to say it's very positive and that it includes everything that you've just mentioned. Now that already gives away two things. One is that it is something which can go anywhere. <laughs> it is something which opens the eyes of children to everything, but also that it is something which is um, positive all the way through. It is something which lifts children up and there is nothing, and I say that very genuinely, in our program which is pessimistic or critical or anything like that. The idea is always to put forward something that's very positive. Um, what it has been found to do is not only help children to understand where the most important things in their lives are, which of course includes love, permanent relationships, and eventually, as we said earlier, marriage. For those who, are, who are, have got a vocation to marriage, there are lots of people who don't marry and lots of people who do different things, and that is absolutely fine. Um, but it also, um, sorry, on that, I coined my own term, which is marriageability, because it seems to me that if you help any child to have the, um, the qualities that make for a good spouse, you can use those same qualities in any part of life. You use them in the workplace, you use them... Um, uh, just being a good friend, you use them in any. And this opens up the whole idea also of democratic values. If you are in a society which um, depends on each other, which we are in our democratic societies, you actually need to form those 
values of being able to step inside other people's shoes in order to bring out the best in them and um, to teach them where the, their own future lies and where the future of other people lies. And I'm giving you a very broad <laughs> spectrum in all of that. What I'm trying to say is that um, Alive to the World is much more than just a programme which concentrates on love and future marriage, but it puts those qualities in the heart of it at the same time. And it's much more character-based. You know, when I've, when I've looked through the materials, it's You're about right. help, helping uh, boys and girls um, as, as children, as uh, aspiring adults, to become good characters. And it is values-based, but it's, it's values-based which, which covers all sorts of identities, all sorts of cultures. Or, you know, it's, it's, uh, these materials could, could as well be uh, uh, subsumed by a Muslim school, as a Christian school, as a, a, a non-religious school, um, it all, up and down the land in any place. You know, these are good, ordinary, healthy values that progress society in a, um, a common sense way. Uh, and I think th there seems to me to be a lack of those materials out there in schools. And you're right, marriage is definitely, it, it talks about, well, marriage is good, but we all know that the data says, and this again is where we would come from, uh, actually the data says that for the vast majority of people growing up with your, your married biological mum and dad, brings about the best chance of really good outcomes. And it's not close in society. It's not close. It's 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 compared to anything else. It's much more significantly uh, optimistic in terms of your potential outcomes. And that's important to society because you're less prone then to get involved in the criminal justice system. Uh, you're less likely to, to encounter teenage pregnancy, et cetera, et cetera. And those things are good for society. So it's not saying other things can't happen. Uh, it's just teaching values, common sense, uh, and character. But in the context of recognizing everyone's different and everyone's valid. And and from that point of view, I just think it's really healthy material. Yes, no, you're absolutely right, Tony. You might be interested in how it came about. Um, the creator of the program is Christine Vollmer, and her right-hand man was um, Carlos Beltrano. What they did was, instead of looking at all the things that go wrong, they started the other way around. What makes for a full sorry, and complete adult life? And big in that, of course, is family. Whichever sort of family, whether um, they're talking also about parents, you know, siblings, um, children, as well as um, a potential spouse. But family is big. So the idea of looking at future families was one of their goals. It wasn't just a thing. It was definitely one of their goals. But also, if you think about it, if you're going to be a successful husband or wife in the future, a good mother or father, a good brother or sister, etc., etc., you also need to be able to work hard. You know, there's a pretty rotten husband or wife if they don't know how to do a good day's work. You also need to be people who are hospitable. You also need to be able to present yourself well. So the program looks at health, for instance. It looks at all that. It's not just um, character. It's also looking at ordinary health. You know, we cover things like dentistry and um, you know other things of that sort. You need to be able to be a good friend, and you need to have a public sense so that you are people who look outside your own family, your own home, into the community. So it does all of these things, but by looking at the positive of the future. So we weren't created as a programme to get round problems. We were created as a programme to look at the future and then work backwards. Because this is another very important aspect that people forget. Um, you don't start teaching maths, for instance, um, and just grabbing any old age group and saying, now we're going to teach you subtraction age 14. We realize if you're going to be a good mathematician, we start age four or five and we start getting into learning multiple um, multiplication tables. But it's the same in character. There are certain moments when it is just easier for children to pick up certain things. And if you miss that particular window, OK, of course you can do anything but you won't be best able to take in that lesson. Um, and of course, it's particularly important 
when children start school because you miss the ability to make good friends and to feel accepted, etc. When you're little, that child can feel just a little bit alienated and that can grow. So we go right to the beginning. Now, tell, tell me, Louise, c- can I ask you, to tell, tell me some of the, uh, c- c- the stories you've told me uh, when we've met so on a one-to-one basis about uh, schools in very difficult areas where these kind of educational programmes have transformed the, the of course, you, you're looking at um, families or children who often don't have families. They're orphans. They're in, in desperate situations. And tell me a little bit about how uh, this material has really made a difference in those cases. Um, well, one of the um, big cases is actually in a school in Venezuela. I should emphasize that um, Christine Volmer, while she's English and French by birth, so she's you know, a European in that sense, and she was brought up in America. She's married to a lovely Venezuelan and has lived there for the last 60 odd years. <laughs> you know, she's a woman of the world in the very best sense and passionate about children because she's um, got seven of them herself. Um, in this particular big school, it had become so violent, and you can understand why, in a country like Venezuela, um, where there are gangs and all the rest of it, just introducing Alive to the World turned the school round, and it became something like a model school. Um, in Peru, um, she actually went to visit a school, a secondary school, that had had the programme for a good long time. And um, there, inspectors were astonished to find that the teenage pregnancy rate had just about gone gone to nothing. And um, they were asked, the headmaster was asked, you know, what have you done? We've, we've just introduced a life to the world. Now, that's correlation. You can't say one causes the other. Yes, yes. But if you start yeah. creating a happy school, that happens. And I can say that um, we had a similar example, actually, in a school in England when I first bought the brought it in here. Lovely. Um, He was actually the sort of head of studies um, who masterminded the introduction in that particular school. Um, And they were going through a difficult transition at the time. They had a new headmaster. um, The school was expanding. A lot of teachers were leaving. Other teachers were arriving. It was a difficult, difficult time. And Again, he said it was a lie to the world, which just cemented a happy atmosphere. Um, and individual teachers at that school tell me the same thing, because you can't come into the classroom having told the children, um, get enough sleep, because otherwise you may be bad tempered and do exactly the same thing yourself. You don't think, well, OK, I better have enough sleep myself. Um, so is that, and in fact, in, in other countries, in Kenya, it is used to teach a training. I mean, it's as broad as that, because it, it's, a, um, it's a way that it so much gets under the skin in such a simple way um, that anyone can take it in. Yeah, that sounds and and, and uh, clearly it's it's a great uh, a potential resource for schools, and we would encourage people to pop across to the website, have a look, get in touch with you. We'll we'll put your email address up so they can, or although it's it's on the website anyway, so they can get in touch with you if they want to. But you you also uh, make the point that this is material which is useful for for homeschoolers as well. So if people are teaching their own kids. Um, this this is a, there, there are uh, parent books or or teacher books as well as as um, student books as well. Do um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? I want to just show you quickly, um, the people listening, you know, what it kind of looks like, because we've missed saying one thing, which is that they are colourful storybooks and all the teaching is done through stories. Um, now, this is a very ancient way of teaching, or Aesop's fables, or we've got um, Jesus in the Bible. Um, teaching through stories is a wonderful way of opening um ideas up in such a way that the children get caught up in the story and they lead the lesson. This is again terribly important. It's not adults telling children. Um, I mean, one story, for instance, is about a little boy who has got to the stage and he's got a Saturday job. He's helping out in a shop and on his way, he realizes he's got a minute to go. He needs to get to that shop fast. And there's an old lady who asked to be helped across the road. Now, that is a real tension. Do you stop 
and let that help the ch- the old lady cross the road and end up late for your job, or do you get to the job? Now there isn't oh, a clear answer. You know, yeah. you have to you talk about it. And so once you've got that story into the classroom, that there's a teacher guide which helps to um, develop exercises and everything else. But the important thing I do stress is that the teachers are there as coordinators. The real live action, the debate, comes from the children. And a large part of this is actually to um, waken up their critical thinking so that they can work out situations themselves. And and what ages does the curriculum or or the RSE materials from Alive to the World, what ages do they span? It can be used flexibly some children grow up faster than others um you can start it in reception you can start in year one if you're teaching from home you could start it whenever actually um because children are adaptable when they're taught at home again i can think of two families who who reported to me that one of them very very interestingly she had an 11 year old boy that she was doing it with she said the subject which caught his attention was shoplifting. And she said, I never thought of talking to him about shoplifting. Um, so it opens up. What it really does is it opens up many more experiences than you would have in an ordinary life. And by taking children through the stories in there, it broadens their ability to cope with sudden happenings. And class-based discussions. What, what, what age, Louise, does it go up to? In England, it only goes up to sort of 13. But overseas, it goes all the way up to um, sort of 18. So that's just waiting for you or somebody else to um, Exactly. That's translate. waiting to be developed. Yeah, or, or yeah, 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 great. So that's, that's but it does go so all the way through. Yeah. Anybody who wants to help you get on with that work, they can get in touch too, Absolutely. I'm guessing. Absolutely. We're delighted. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, t- tell us a little bit about you know, your own book. You've you've written a book yourself. So tell us a bit about that. In the heart of the um, the whole education in this area, children are being taught about the intimacy of sexuality in such a way that it can actually freeze some children. It can do them great damage because talking about intimate things in a a, a class environment is not the most helpful way of um, of speaking. Um, so a life to the world doesn't actually tackle that sort of thing. As I say, it already ca- covers health, but it doesn't ca- cover the intimacy of sexuality. And yet that is such a key part of um, who we are as people and of understanding who we are as we grow up. So what's your book called? My book is called Sexuality Explained, and it's called A Guide for Parents and Children. And is that available via uh, Amazon and all That is available booksellers? on Amazon. It's easy to, to get anywhere. Yep. yep. Um, and the idea is, again, it's done through stories. Any parent can pick it up, read through the stories, and help um, help with their children's education. Excellent. And what sort of age child is that aimed at? And I know it's it's very variable because these things are age sensitive and personality sensitive how right you are it's um starts pre-puberty and goes up into mid-adolescence so it's not designed to be sort of one one moment it's 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 designed over a period of time great well thank you for telling us about that louise listen um i it's it's been a delight to talk to you um uh, I I hope people will look at these materials. You know, I, again, I stress there are that things like Love Wise, which are great. If if you know if your school can take uh, stuff with a Christian overt Christian content, there's wonderful stuff there too. If they can't, your stuff is is really worth looking at. I would encourage people to pop across to the website, get in touch with you, uh, and let's you know let's let's meet some of the bad material with some good material, which is objectively sound and really makes a difference in kids' lives. So, Louise. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, Thank you for your time today. And uh, I hope people get in touch with you about this wonderful material. Great. Thank you, Tony. It's a great pleasure to speak to you.